This is Megan Kelly's interview with Steve Lomas. Uh, if you are not familiar with this guy, he is a former New York City uh, police officer and uh, head of the uh, biggest uh, police union uh, in the uh, country, which is obviously in New York. This guy never saw a cop that wasn't a perfect police officer and an angel. Uh, he uh, basically throws a zillion aspersions out there. He is a, a Republican in support, obviously, of Donald Trump. And he, for the most part, hates anybody that has a single bad thought, not word, but even thought about any police officer in the country. I would have loved to have seen him interview. Uh, I would have loved to have seen Megyn Kelly interview him and ask him what he thought uh, about uh, Daniel Holtzclaw when he got convicted of raping those 13 women. But he wasn't going to come on anybody's uh, uh, network uh, to discuss that one. And he also wasn't going to come on anybody's network to discuss uh, that police officer that shot that man in uh, South Carolina when the cop told him uh, to get his license and he turned to get it and the cops started shooting. So you can't get these guys on TV when you have a police officer dead cold uh, in order for them to show that they can be even handed. So it is what it is. Uh, check that. Check out this uh, this interview. Well, our next guest represents the men and women keeping folks safe in this very city as the convention plays out. He says not only does President Obama seem to have his finger on the scale in this debate over cops in America, he says the Commander-in-Chief has the blood of these fallen officers on his hands. We have a President of the United States and a Governor of Minnesota making a statement that they've made less than one day after those uh, police-involved shootings. And those police-involved shootings, make no mistake, are what absolutely has triggered this this rash of, of, of senseless murders of law enforcement officers across this country. Um, it, it is reprehensible. The President of the United States has blood on his hands and it will not be able to come washed off. Detective Steve Loomis is president of the Cleveland Police Patrolmen's Association and with me now. Detective, thank you for being here. So, uh, different guy. I thought uh, they were talking about the uh, head of the uh, New York uh, City Police Union, my mistake. This is the guy uh, that uh, was jumping up and down uh, when it came to uh, the uh, shooting of, or well, the murder of Tamir Rice. He was jumping up and down when people were going uh, ballistic when they saw the video, and he uh, defended the officers. And I guess he had an in with the uh, prosecuting the state prosecuting attorney because the attorney uh, wouldn't even bring an indictment and that's why um, that uh, attorney prosecuting attorney is out on his ass because that was an elected uh, position and the Black Lives Matter group came down full force uh, throughout the, the uh, county in order to get him removed. He's got blood on his hands for the, for the death of the Absolutely. officers. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Megan, How do you we're, get we're to, on Black Lives Matter or on President Obama? Um, we're used to activists, we're used to anarchists, we're used to militant people that want to blame everybody for their problems um, other than themselves. And we're used to that kind of rhetoric. What happens when the President of the United States, when uh, athletes, when actors, when they use their fame to uh, uh, approve of the false narrative that's out there um, from Black Lives Matter, from the new Black The president Black defends cops in every remark, he, in every speech he makes, and, and then he says, but we also must acknowledge, I mean, Malik Shabazz obviously is a, is a race bigger who has spent a life condemning Jews, condemning whites, and what have you. But that doesn't mean that all these cop shootings are good shootings, if you will, good in, in the terms of policy and within policy. Sure. And if they're not, the, the, the officers are prosecuted and they're convicted. Um, that is such bullshit. I, I, and this guy, uh, just so that you are aware, uh, he uh, is, uh, well, the Cleveland Police Department is under a consent order, okay, because uh, the, the police department is so screwed up and they have uh, killed and maimed 
and abuse so many citizens. And they had they agreed to that consent order because they knew they were screwed up. So this guy comes out of his mouth uh, as holier than now when he's just as dirty as probably most of the uh, cops in the Cleveland Police Department. He is full of shit. That's the, that we have a land of laws. And, uh, in the vast majority of the cases, the cops are acquitted, and, and many people believe that system is rigged in their favor, that you can't get a conviction of a cop. You know, what are we going to do with people that believe that? You know, you're telling me that the, the black judges, the black prosecutors are all corrupt, and they're all just trying to get the cops out of trouble. Um, it's a ridiculous notion, and it's, and it's one that will have to change if we're going to move forward. What about the fact that blacks are killed in disproportionate numbers uh, compared to th their population size to whites in this country? Well, the, we're called into the, the African-American neighborhoods. Blacks are victimized by other black people as well in disproportionate numbers. So basically what he's trying to say is because they're called into black neighborhoods uh, at a disproportionate uh, level uh, that uh, black people are killed more by police. Well, if you want to look at the numbers, black on black crime, quote unquote, is supposedly approximately 93%. Uh, so let me explain that again. 93% of the crime perpetrated on blacks is supposedly performed by blacks. That's what he would use to back up his numbers. But it doesn't hold water because 83% of the crime that is perpetrated on whites is performed by whites. And if that is in fact a correlation, then there should be a ton of white people that are killed by cops. And it should be a much greater number given the population size. So his numbers don't hold water. From other people and other races across this country. We're called into these neighbors, Megan. In, in uh, uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, he can't even put, uh, put a sentence together. You're called into black neighborhoods. That is absolutely true but you're also called into white neighborhoods, but you're not killing them. But you, you are killing unarmed black people. And in particular, black people that are having, uh, shall we say, uh, mental issues when your officers uh, either aren't trained and don't want to take the time to properly assess the situation and feel that any risk of even a scratched fingernail is too great for them to take. So instead of trying to subdue unarmed people, they figure they just want to bring the situation uh, to a conclusion. So they pull out their guns and they shoot people. I mean, it was ridiculous. They even shot a man who was naked. And the last time I looked, a naked person, and I do mean absolutely naked, with nothing in their hands, is not a threat to an officer. Given that an officer should have had some type of physical uh, combat hand-to-hand -hand training, okay, and has at their beck and call tasers, batons, etc., in order to subdue a person, especially a naked person. Louisiana. Uh, those officers were called. There was a black man that called and said, hey, that black guy over there is pointing a gun at me. Those officers responded to that. They didn't go there. President Obama had that guy sign the effect. Effect. Final the effect, detective, when people see Alton Sterling standing outside in front of this store, taken down and shot in video sure. of the U.S. And we're not law enforcement, but you know the, the reaction that people have to this, which is, it doesn't look like he deserved to lose his life. I didn't see a gun. The gun was in his pocket. Why? Are the, are the police trigger happy when it comes to African Americans as people like... The answer is yes. They are taught to fear black men, especially black men 18 to 35. We are, quote unquote, a physical threat to them, no matter how big or how small we are, versus no matter how big or how small they are. You could have a six foot four white guy that's scared of a five foot six black guy merely because he's black. That guy's going to get shot 
if the officer is quote unquote in fear for his life, weapon or no weapon. Listen, that's a ridiculous notion. I've been a police officer for 23 years. I've answered thousands of radio calls uh, of people that need help. And not one time did I get on that radio and say, hey, what color is the family? But that's you, right? I mean, well, they're, they're, po they're positing that no, there's an inherent all. bias against blacks yeah. by cops, even if the cops themselves are blacks. It's, you know, it, it's an excuse for the, the failures that, that certain leaders in the African-American community have. How are we ignoring the fact that five, over 500 homicides in the city of Chicago in the city of Cleveland, we had 132 homicides last year, and if you take the black suspects that kill black people out of that equation, and I'm talking about a two-year-old baby, I'm talking about a six-year-old baby, a 72-year-old grandmother sitting on the front porch, if you take them out of that equation, the city of Cleveland would have had 29 homicides last year. I'm not calling anybody names. I'm saying there's a problem here. We need to look at it. We need to address it as a thoughtful community and not spread the venom. And when the President of the United States and athletes and everybody else uh, buy into the false narrative of Black Lives Matter, the new Black Panther movement, Al Sharpton, when was the last time that guy got anything right? You know, uh, he does. Dangerous is what he's, he's absolutely dangerous. And, and now police officers are getting killed because of that right. That is a crock of bullshit. Now, I will give him that uh, there is a problem with black on black crime, but that's not the issue that the Black Lives Matter movement are addressing. Just because uh, little Johnny did something, that means that we should only uh, look at little Johnny and not look at the evil that you do. No, that's a bunch of bullshit. You do them both at the same time. But these guys always want to deflect over to black on black crime to deflect away from uh, bad cops doing bad things. It don't wash. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, that guy, is, I mean, he is, I, he is absolutely a defender of every uh, police officer in the world. And um, he can see no wrong that any police officer does. He would look to defend uh, a police officer th that probably shot his own mama in the face.